this week when we come back on Broncos Weekend. Alexis Perry is taking us to Galway, Ireland. We're still feeling the luck of the Irish after St. Patrick's Day, so who better to chat with than two world champion Irish dancers that also happen to be massive Broncos fans? That's next. Irish dancing and the Denver Broncos, two things not associated with each other most often, but for the Gardner brothers, both are a way of life. Alexis Perry is back this week in Voice of the Fan, profiling Matthew and Michael Gardner as they explain why they were Denver Broncos fans long before they became world champion Irish dancers. Thanks so much, Matt. In honor of St. Patrick's Day earlier this week, Broncos country, we want to introduce you to two of your diehard members who you may actually recognize from their viral Irish dancing videos on Instagram and TikTok. Mike and Matt Gardner joining us all the way from Galway, Ireland. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here today. What's up, Thanks Mike and Matt? Thanks for having us and, and happy belated St. Pa- St. Patrick's Day. Yes, happy belated St. Patrick's Day to you. Well, not only are you guys five-time world champion Irish dancers and members of the iconic Riverdance show, but you are also lifelong Broncos fans. So tell us how you fell in love with the Denver Broncos. Did you guys choose Denver as your team or were you born into your Broncos fandom? Well, um, we were both born, as well as our older sister, um, in Denver. And two Irish parents. Yeah. And yeah, so we, we grew up kind of just watching all the Denver sports teams. And I think we just took to the Broncos more than any of the others. Just we just yeah. had a natural kind of like yeah. attention to them. And the the way we I remember when I really, really fell in love with them was we were actually at the rodeo and we, we weren't even watching the game. So it wasn't even actually at a game. Um, and the announcer announced that it was the game against the Patriots. And Champ Bailey uh, intercepted Tom Brady and ran it back all the way. Yeah. And that, that was such an important memory for me as a child. Like, I didn't even get to see it live or anything, but that's why I have the jersey on right now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. Now, of all the great moments in Denver Broncos franchise history, what do you consider to be your favorite ones? You know, one or two. One that really, really sticks out to me and Matthew. Um, when we moved to Ireland in 2006, it was it started to become quite hard to watch the Broncos because obviously as young kids, we couldn't be staying up until two or three or four in the morning, you know, <laughs> here, especially with school the next day. Right. But there was one, that magical Tivo year, uh, we just decided, Matthew and I, we figured out our mom's laptop password and we stole the laptop at midnight <laughs> and we were up in our room and we were watching that Tebow game against the Steelers and it went to overtime. And one of the craziest things, it was it was incredible and we'll never forget it, was on that first pass in overtime, and I'm sure everyone remembers that, our stream cut out. So it cut out before DT caught it. So the two of us were like screaming in our bedroom at 3 a.m. Yeah, you you honestly, you couldn't script it. You couldn't script it. And, then, and we were like, what's going on? What's going to happen here? And the stream came back with Tebow pounding the ground. So immediately we we didn't really know what was going on. We were like, it was either really good or really bad. <laughs> was yeah. he doing his t-bowing or was he mad at him? And then obviously it turned out like a good. It was a good uh, memory. So that's one that really sticks out. But obviously you got to remember the Super Bowls as well. Oh wow, that's awesome, man! What a time for the the, the internet and everything to go out, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, like you could not script it. <laughs> Yes. Well, speaking of the internet, you told me via DM that your two greatest loves are Irish dancing and the Denver Broncos. So tell us how you guys combine the two to go viral on social media. Well, you know, one of our, our, our two favorite things are Irish dancing and the Broncos, and we just love to support the Broncos in any way we can. So Matthew and I like to put up some uh, dancing videos to showcase the Irish culture. But obviously, when it comes to game season, and, uh, you know, game day, we like to put on the Broncos gear and get out and, and showcase the Irish dancing in our Broncos gear. Uh, so one of the most recent ones we did, actually, we danced to Tiesto's The Business. And of course, everyone knows Tiesto is a huge Broncos fan as well. Uh, okay. And he actually reshared it, which was so insane. It was so, so cool that he got to see it. But uh, maybe if Tiesto's playing the Super Bowl one year, we can all go up in Broncos gear. He'll know who to call. <laughs> now, are there any other professional teams over in Ireland that have the orange and blue colors? Uh, not no. in Ireland. No, no not in Ireland. It's definitely okay. unique. Okay, yes, you guys stand out over there, huh? Exactly. Absolutely, we're proud. 
Well, St. Patrick's Day also marks the first day of the new league year, as well as the start of free agency. The Broncos, they've signed corner Ronald Darby, running back Mike Boone, and inked Shelby Harris to a three-year deal as well. So what are your initial impressions of George Payton's first few moves as GM? Yeah, it's uh, it's been very interesting anyway. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I, been, it's been great. I'm, I'm excited to hear that Shelby Harris is free signing. He's, yeah. like, he's so important. Uh, that run stopper, and he's got the best hands in the league. You, you had to say. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I, I like uh, Darby as well. I've actually yeah. kind of been a fan of Darby um, for a while. Um, mm -hmm. So that'll be exciting as well. Good to get corners. And maybe we have to get another corner in the draft or something. But it's an exciting time, especially with the new GM. And we'll see, we'll see what, what direction we're going to go from here. Last but certainly not least, Mike, Matt, do you guys have any questions for the Hall of Famer Steve Atwater? Yeah. Well, actually, we, we wanted to know, as competitors ourselves, we're always interested to find out what other, you know, uh, an elite athlete like yourself uh, has to say on something like this. You know, when you're competing for championships and world titles, uh, you know, does your mindset change once you reach that world title and you become the chase when somebody is chasing you rather than you chasing them? Or does your mindset remain the same? It's, it's back to ground zero. You're working for that world title again. Well, I, I think... You know, a lot of different people handle that differently. Um, you know, back when we won the back-to-back -back Super Bowls, I would say right. a majority of the guys on our team still had the same attitude of we're going to go out here and we're going to be hungry. We're not going to play passive. And our yeah. coaches had that mentality as well. You know, they, we're going to run it up. If we're, you know, we're up by 10, we're going to we want to be up by 20, by 30. Uh, and defensively, you know, we just we wanted to be just constantly bringing pressure on the offense. So, um, you know, I think we, we, for the most part, had the mindset of, uh, yeah, we're, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not satisfied. You know, we, we want yeah, more. Yeah. And also realizing that it's happened so few times. Uh, and when you have an opportunity to be in a special situation like that, you got to take advantage of it because those times only come around every once, every, every blue moon. So, and yeah. uh, we, we fully maximize it. So yeah, I, I'm honored to have played on that team. Absolutely. Thank, thanks yeah, very much. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, well, thank you. Matt, Mike, thank you guys so much for hopping on with us today during this incredibly busy week for you. And thanks so much for repping the orange and blue out yeah, there in Ireland. good. Always. Absolutely, always. Thank you for having us. Be sure to follow them at Gardner Brothers on social media for some awesome Irish dance content. Matt, back to you. Thank you, Alexis, and a belated happy St. Patrick's Day to Michael and Matthew across the pond. Hopefully we will see them in Denver sometime soon. That'll do it for us today on Broncos Weekend. I'm Matt Boyer. So long, Broncos country. We will see you next week.